Mark, uh, in order to accomplish controlling various parameters in real time, you've engineered some cl rather clever modifications to your guitar. Uh, but but let's come back to that. Uh, first, can you please tell us about your innovative approach to creating these incredible tones of yours? Uh, can you run through your signal chain? Sure. What all is involved and in how do you go about processing your guitar tones? Yeah, well, it starts with the VG88. Um, and that, I think some people... Um, confused with a guitar synth but it's not a guitar synth at all it's uh it's a guitar processor so you can hear if i scrape the string here it all comes through perfectly intact in fact every tiny little thing you do comes through uh perfectly intact because it's processing the audio signal of the guitar uh, it's not a guitar synth uh in any way it's it's just processor but what makes it different is that you can get in and process and manipulate the sound on a much deeper level than you can with conventional effects. So um, I'm going to use conventional effects as well, and they can be great, but I think of them as like a sonic paint to the original audio. So chorus and distortion and things like that are kind of like a, a paint on, the, on the, the, the outside surface of the audio. Whereas with the VG88, and its successor, the VG99, which does even more, but I, I get everything I need from the 88. Um, you can get in really deep to the actual um, inner parts of the sound and, and sculpt it on a much deeper level than conventional effects while keeping every tiny little subtle detail of what you do. So all the tonal effects that you might create on the guitar. And John, as you know, I do a lot of that with the way I play uh, and that's why for me the other important thing about the VG is that it does keep all those little things so a lot of what I do is based on tonal effects I create with my fingers on the fretboard and with the pick and fingers here and um, those often I found got obscured by conventional effects um, you know if you plug your guitar direct into a mixing desk go DI in with nothing on it at all you can hear every little detail and that I found once I'd put a couple of effects on the guitar started to get obscured some of those things and the more effects I put on by the time I got a really rich harmonically rich sustaining sound quite a lot of those things were were obscured um, so the great thing about the VG for me was that I could get that really rich harmonically rich uh, sound while keeping every tiny little detail of what I did on the, on the fretboard tonally. So it's great for me um, for both those reasons. Uh, now, what happens after that is the signal split. So I use a, an A to D, in this case, I'm using a, a RME Babyface, which I use for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it um, really good quality A to D, and that's important. And the other thing is it's MIDI controllable. So I can control the signal with a pedal and the reason that's important for me is um, I split the signal. So the analog signal from the VG goes direct to the PA or the mixing desk, depending on whether I'm recording or playing live. And that I need to be able to control that independently. So from the laptop signal, even before it hits the laptop. So um, that's why it's important for me to have the MIDI control on the, the RME. And then the RME ADs it so I get it a digital signal going into the laptop and on there I do all kinds of uh, sonic manipulations and then that gets AD back to analog and out of the RME I get two stereo signals going to the PA one direct from the VG and the other from the laptop which is the processed signal which I add in or replace the original with depending on what I'm doing so um, that's basically it and then I don't use guitar amps or anything like that as you know, because the sound I get coming out of my rig is exactly the sound I want. So I don't want to start changing that by putting it through guitar amps and things like that. Aside from controlling the effects and parameters via your laptop, I couldn't help but notice the obvious modifications to your guitar. Can you tell us a little bit about the modifications, what they control, and what inspired you to route these controls into the guitar itself? Sure. Um, 
Well, basically what I've got here is a, a V-meter touch strip. And this allows me to control any number of parameters on the laptop. And then I've got the sustainer, which I mentioned before. Um, and I've got two pickups here, extra pickups. I don't use the conventional pickups. I use this hex pickup, uh, which is a Roland hex pickup just for the audio. Audio sends out six audio signals, which the VG88 uses. Uh, one for each string. And then this is a Fishman triple pay pickup, which runs the Fishman, which allows me to play synths, which again, I have on the laptop. And these are just the controller boxes for these two pickups. Uh, and so that's basically it. On the In the back of the guitar, I have got all the electronics for the stainer, which is a lot and it completely fills this. I had to do a bit of chiseling out in there to make some extra room because there wasn't quite enough in there. Um, but that's basically it. So um, this is actually just stuck on there. And this switch I have made um, switch on and off the sustainer. This no longer does anything. You have a variety of pedals additionally, which yeah. I assume afford you access to the various tones and controlling parameters. Yeah. How do they work in conjunction with the rest of your setup? Yeah, well, I've got uh, various pedals. I've got a Roland uh, FC300, which gives me two continuous controllers, plus a bunch of foot pedals, which are all linked to things on the laptop. So the foot pedals uh, do things like maybe start and stop a looper or switch on and off various effects. And the continuous controllers will do all kinds of things. So often one, one pedal will control a whole bunch of different parameters in, you know, perhaps some moving in this direction, some moving in that direction while the pedal moves and then partway through the pedal's throw, a bunch of other parameters start to get moved and perhaps the other ones stop being moved. So it gets kind of complicated. Um, but to create the sounds I'm after uh, often takes a kind of a bit of a complicated setup to make it happen, uh, which is something that I get quite into and actually really enjoy trying to figure out how I can make things, a uh, certain sound I hear happen actualize yeah, in the real world.